Tell me about Cuenca, Ecuador. The city of Cuenca, in full, Santa Ana de los Cuatro Rios de Cuenca, is the capital of the Oswai province. Okay, so I'm going to reveal the big secret, which isn't a secret, but people have, uh, maybe I've been building it to a peak, but I don't think so. There's been, uh, in the video, the toys, all the extra things, and a lot of questions on it. And it's not that I was really trying to be coy, it's just in the other videos that I was doing, I'm trying to cover a topic and I didn't want to get off topic. I do that enough as it is. And I didn't want to take a 10 minute video and turn it into a 20 minute video. So I thought I would just make it a separate video. And so here we are. Here's the deal. A few months ago, I met Sandy and then I met Adriana and we've been learning our languages together. Um, and it's been great and we've become very good friends they're just wonderful people so Adriana and I have spent an awful lot of time together almost every day and she I I would go when I would come into Cuenca I would be in her office and I could use her Wi-Fi and work on some projects and we would go to lunch together and she was there and you know working with her clients and doing the things that lawyers here do and that's how I got to get some insight into how she was. Because if she was like the typical lawyer here, I wouldn't be mentioning her when it comes to that. But in watching how she handled things, I became very impressed. Um, and again, another topic. I respected that and I admire her for her abilities. And so we became even more friends and we would go hang at the park and to spend so much time together. She mentioned that she was going to be changing her apartment. And at the same time, I had already decided uh, that I was gonna move out of Hiron and come back up to Cuenca. It had nothing to do with meeting her. This was another process, which you already know about. Well, in our conversations about that, between the translator for Google and working, working through it, uh, we talked about possibly sharing a house because, you know, she had been out to my house a few times in Hiron, saw how huge it was, and when she asked what I was going to, and when she asked what I was going to get, I said something similar. So she's seeing all that wasted space. And so we had conversations uh, for about a month about house sharing, the potential of it. She was extremely concerned that it would be interrupting my zenness, uh, the peace, that, uh, the tranquility that I have, because she has a child. So she was back and forth, and then her father heard about it, and he put the brakes on it, and it's like, whatever. I'm proceeding to find a place, so I'm, I'm, nothing had changed for me. And so Lourdes, Mary Lou, my real estate person, She's out walking the streets and finding, and I, I kept her informed on what was going on, but it didn't alter what I was looking for. So I found this house, I got this house. The day that I decided to take this house, she sent me, Adriana, a text saying, can we still do that arrangement? Sure, why not? I mean, the house, as you see, it's a lot of bedrooms, so four bedrooms. Sure, why not? So, oh great, thank you, thank you, thank you. You don't have to thank me. I mean, we're house sharing. And so that's why the office and my bedroom, they're on the front half of the house, the other two bedrooms, and you've got the upstairs, that's hers and Martin's, and now her sister's here for a while. Um, that's, you know, that's their part of the house. This is my part of the house. Nobody comes into my office area nobody comes into my bedroom I've got my own bathroom downstairs is the common area I do most of the cooking they do most of the cleaning masa filling rolling it out 
before I fry. It's actually working out really good. Is there something more? No, there's not anything more. We're really good friends. We're not boyfriend, girlfriend. We're not doing anything on the sly. It's nothing like that. We're just really good friends. And Sandy has become a, a good friend as she's been staying here. And I, I'm rooting for her because she's been trying so hard to make a life here. And it's, it's very difficult. It's not the easiest thing to do. Uh, she, Today is her first day at her new job, and she came home for lunch. <laughs> and she explained, you know, the arrangement there. She's at a store that it's not just fashion clothes, I didn't realize, but there's a different sections to it, and they sell home products, and they have TVs, and they have cell phones, and it's a pretty big store at Mall Del Rio. And what she gets is $400 a month is her pay and she gets a commission 1% off of sales. So if she, well the number one salesperson there made about $700 last month. The hours they work, it's from 9 or 10 in the morning until 7 at night, five days a week. They get two hours for lunch. So she finishes up today around 7 o'clock We'll get home about 7.30. So it's long days, and that's the pay. Base pay is $400. They're paid every month. The commission is every two weeks. So, yeah. For her first, essentially her first job, because all her life so far has been school and university, and then job hunting. And so now she finally, she has this job, so she's excited about that. She's not excited about the type of job she has that wasn't her dream when she was going to school. She had this dream of working in a lab. Well, that may come to pass. She also can teach, and she had applied here in Cuenca for a teaching position for biotechnology. And that's still a possibility, although it probably won't happen but they, it hasn't been shut down. So that's the general situation here. That's what's going on. I spend my day mostly here uh, working on these videos or doing some uh, internet consulting work. And now I have this project of putting together a website promoting these people like I mentioned in the, in the last video. So my day is pretty much eaten up from the time I get up until almost the time I go to bed with a couple hours I'll watch a movie or some TV or something like that. They go to bed way before me. They're, they're in bed and asleep usually by 8 o'clock and I'm usually up until 12, 1 or 2 o'clock in the morning. And then I get up around 5 or 6. They're up around 5 or 6. So that's the routine. That's what's going on. It's a pretty good situation. I'm so far, I'm very happy with it. We've got a long ways to go. So we'll see, but they're so kind and respectful. I can't imagine if there's ever a problem, it'll probably be me. So let's hope it's not. So for everyone that's been curious, I hope that answers the questions for you. Um, is it any of your business? <laughs> probably not, but it's nothing secretive. And the last thing I wanted to do was you know, have people create their own story and have it be something that it's not. It's not fair to these people that are here. So I wanted to be, I wanted to do this video for that purpose, to make it, to put it out there. This is the reality. See you later. You know you could.